Sigma Tiger News. All up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Hamas are scum? No debate. But we've got evidence. Invasion continues and Osama bin Lager? <laughs> You're here with the big Sig Tig. What do we got today? Let's find out. Ooh, sickening new video shows Hamas line up female Israeli soldiers on October 7th. Here are the girls who can get pregnant, they were quoted as saying. Yeah, so you can see their intentions. Absolutely disgusting humans and what they did that day. The government of Palestine. Harrowing video released Wednesday shows the moment five female Israeli soldiers covered in blood and surrounded by the bodies of their massacred massacred comrades, were threatened with rape and then taken away to Gaza by Hamas terrorists on October 7th. Body cam footage from the Hamas gunman shows the moment the young women operating at the Nahal Az base outside the Gaza Strip were handcuffed and pressed against a wall while still in pajamas. In the sickening video, the terrorists could be heard gloating and announcing their apparent plans to sexually assault the soldiers. Here are the girls who can get pregnant, one of the gunmen said, you're so beautiful. There's a still from the video. The Hostages and Missing Families Forum, which released the video, said the harrowing tape shows the horrifying reality of the five hostages still in the clutches of the terror group in Gaza. They were identified as Liri Albag, Karina Ariev, Agam Berger, Daniela Gilboa, and Nama Levy. And we pray for your safe return. Berger's father, Shlomi, told the Post that he couldn't imagine what it felt like for his 19-year-old daughter to face those threats while surrounded by dozens of armed men. This is a wake-up call to the world. Look what we're dealing with, Shlomi said. You saw how many terrorists were in that video. Look at them all. Disgusting. You only see three minutes, but we know that they sat in the same place for two or three hours, and in front of their eyes, they saw their friends that were murdered on the floor. Maybe they told themselves, I'm lucky, I'm just wounded, but I don't know how someone can be in this situation and be okay in their mind. Shlomi, who was first shown in the video last month, said he could see just how afraid his daughter and her fellow soldiers were. When they said, you are pretty and I can get you pregnant, I don't know what a young girl who is hearing this is thinking, the father lamented. It's crazy as a father that my girl is in this situation and I can't help her. I can't do anything to help her. And we pray for you too, sir. Shlomi said he and the other parents backed up the decision to release the video to the public to put pressure on Israeli's leadership to advance negotiations to secure the release of the hostages in Gaza, if they're still alive, because they went in and they found um, Shani Luke uh, there earlier this week, who was paraded through um, the streets after they had uh, murdered and raped her as well. The women are among the roughly 100 hostages who have remained under Hamas's captivity for more than seven months. Unbelievable. The video is a damning testament to the nation's failure to bring home the hostages who have been forsaken for 229 days, the group said in a statement urging that the hostage exchange talks with Hamas resume. Apparently, Egypt uh, had a uh, peace treaty or a ceasefire or a hostage agreement, and they went ahead and changed it. And when it was presented, uh, they rejected it, obviously. So Egypt has a large part to play in the problem here. Um... Yeah, so Israel is in there, and they're like, release our civilians. Uh, the hostages must be released, or there is no deal. And then Hamas is coming back saying, well, we want a better deal for us. We want you guys to never attack us. We want the land. We want all of our hostages back. And Israel's like, no, you don't get to choose anything. Release the hostages or be destroyed. So we'll pray for the souls of all of these people. Absolutely unbelievable. And Hamas is scum and pigs. And if you support Palestine, I don't care, okay? You're supporting a terrorist organization, okay? Hamas must be destroyed. Moving right along, suspect in stabbing of Santa Monica tourist faces charges. Of course, let's hope so. 29-year-old homeless man suspected of stabbing two tourists and assaulting another near Santa Monica's 3rd Street Promenade earlier this week was charged with attempted murder and assault with a deadly weapon Tuesday. Larry Amelia Sedano was arrested on Sunday for allegedly attacking the three victims in the 1500 block of 4th Street. 
near a parking structure in the popular shopping area, according to the Santa Monica Police Department. If convicted of all charges filed, Sedano faced the maximum possible sentence of life in state prison. Police said all the attacks were unprovoked. The victims have been described by prosecutors as tourists visiting from Germany. Perhaps he's seen the story about how they're all about, like, indoctrinating children with these feeling rooms in the preschool or exploratory rooms. I want to express our deepest sympathies to the victims of this violent crime. L.A. County District Attorney Georges Gascon said in a statement Tuesday announcing the charges, this violent behavior not only affects the immediate victims, but also affects the sense of safety and security within our community, especially among those visiting from other areas. Our office is committed to seeking justice for the victims and ensuring the offender is held accountable. Really, George? Well, right here we have a statement from Bill Malugan. Awesome. Awesome dude, just totally giving us the straight truth. Santa Monica PD has arrested Larry Amelia Sedino, suspected of stabbing two people in an unprovoked attack near 3rd Street Promenade yesterday. He's on probation for larceny. Law enforcement sources tell me he also had a case for assault with a deadly weapon and elder abuse dismissed less than two weeks ago, right before it was set to go to a jury trial and also has prior convictions for evading and vandalism. So Georges Ascon is totally... Um, into releasing these migrants and not prosecuting them. Charge them, not prosecute them. Charge them, release them on bail, and they reoffend. So, Georges Gascon, you get two thumbs down from the tiger. You are a terrible district attorney. Keeping the people safe. Liar. San Diego makes history with illegal invasion. San Diego is now the number one sector on the southern border for illegal entry. They're pouring in from Iran, China, and Pakistan. Not a single Mexican. What the heck? Let's go ahead and have a look at this. It's Andy, good morning to you. For the first time since the 1990s, Border Patrol San Diego sector is now seeing the most illegal crossings of anywhere on the southern border. And we were out here during the overnight hours as masses of men from around the world came through here. Take a look at this video. This was 2 a.m., right where I'm standing, right here in Hacumba, California, about an hour east of downtown San Diego, as we watch men from the Middle East and Asia pouring in here very nonchalantly as they cross illegally. Several of them are what are known as special interest aliens. That means they are coming in from countries with potential national security concerns, and they should be subject to additional DHS vetting. We talked to these guys. There was not a single one of them from Mexico. Take a listen to this. Where are you guys from? What country? Pakistan. Pakistan. India. India. Where are you Turkey. Turkey? Yeah. Turkey. Okay. India. 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 Where are you guys from? Turkey. 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 Turkey? Where are you guys from? China. China. Ecuador. Ecuador? Where are you guys from? India. 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 Sagar Baba. India. 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 Iran. 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 Why'd you come? No freedom. No no freedom? Yes, in Iran. Iran is a dangerous country. No freedom for speak, for writing, for singing. All right, enough of that. So there you have it, people. These people are pouring in from all these other countries, and uh, they're seeking asylum. Well, guess what? You can't fly your plane into Mexico or Ecuador or something like that and walk all the way up into America and expect to be uh, accepted. But this is exactly what's happening because Mayorkas' border is completely wide open to anybody. Like, you could fly from any country and just walk through and be like, where are you from? Just be like, uh, whatever, just lie, make sure you have no papers, and then boom, you're in. So it's the same video there. Moving right along, UKPM. Rishi Sunak announced a snap July 4th election. Yee, good idea. I don't know. Uh, he said on Wednesday that the next UK general election would be held on July 4th, 2024. He asked His Majesty the King to dissolve Parliament accordingly. The snap decision is a sign of Sunak's concern that the Conservative Party, slated to lose big, will struggle even further if the election is held during the cold winter. So yeah, uh, the Conservatives have governed as a center-left party for almost 15 years, presiding over mass migration, inflation, record spending, hate speech laws, and more. Are you sure these guys are conservative? They sound pretty liberal to me. In recent months, they have attempted to pivot in order to minimize their losses to right-leaning parties such as Nigel Farage's Reform UK. All right. So if you're conservative, you can't be center-left. That's liberal, okay? 
So that doesn't even make sense. So go ahead and change your party's name, cross the floor, whatever. Good luck. You're probably going to lose. Oh no, what is Putin done? War in space. He launches a terrifying satellite killer weapon. It's already tracking U.S. tech in orbit, Pentagon fears. An unofficial Russian source claimed the launch carried a secret military device. Look out. Raging Vladimir Putin, sorry, Vladimir Putin, has launched a terrifying weapon system into space capable of killing other satellites. Killing, yeah, because they're organic. They're organisms. They can die. So this is uh, clearly fluffed up hard. The Pentagon said that the Russian counter space weapon was put into the same orbit as a U.S. government satellite is likely tracking the space device already. Ooh, good grief. The Russians launched a counter space weapon capable of wreaking havoc on the world communication system. Yeah, so that is a problem. Well, what are they going to do? There's an image of uh, the Cosmos 2576, the US 314 satellite. Ooh, looks like it's following closely behind. The Russian space object, believed to be the Cosmos 2576, was launched on May 16th on a Soyuz 2.1B carrier rocket from Russia's Plesetsk Cosmodrome, some 497 miles north of Moscow. It is now in the same orbit as the American spy satellite US 314, operated by the US National Reconnaissance Office. An unofficial Russian source claimed that the launch carried a secret military device. While it was previously reported as a Russian space satellite, the US has not warned has now warned it could be a counter space weapon capable of attacking other such tech. Look out! Oh my god! It was deployed in the same orbit as a US government satellite and assessments further indicate characteristics resembling previously deployed counter space payloads from 2019-2022. So it's probably going to try to infiltrate the uh, American satellite, maybe overtake it, and if they can't do that, maybe they'll just destroy it and shoot it down. Is it cause for war? Maybe. We'll see. We'll follow closely on that development. Biden had been openly hammering Israel's military strategy in Gaza. A parade of top officials have ratcheted up their criticism of Israel, signaling deep frustration with the country's anti-Hamas campaign. Well, yeah, apparently they went into a UN zone uh, and uh, bombed a school that was apparently used by Hamas. And then after they did that, they entered in the IDF and uh, they ended up killing a doctor, a child, and two civilians. And everyone's like, oh, okay, okay, time to shut this down now. Well, guess what? We did a story earlier about the Hamas pigs and what they're doing to the captive women, raping them. They're disgusting, like, non-humans. They're subhuman. Hamas is subhuman. Boom. There it is. So, uh, top officials are publicly calling Israel's strategy in Gaza self-defeating and likely to open the door to Hamas's return. Level criticism in the Middle East. Ally not seen since the war began in October. The officials say Israel's government has failed to hold parts of Gaza after clearing them, has turned the civilian population and the rest of the world against it, with widespread bombing and inadequate humanitarian aid, and enabled Hamas to recruit more fighters. For months, kept any criticism private, quietly pushing Israel to shift how it retaliates against Hamas for the October 7th attack that started the war. But the frustration of watching Israel refuse to change course has increasingly spilled into the open, each broadside a crowbar, widening the rift between Washington and Jerusalem. Yeah, and, but they're sending them another billion dollars in weapons. No worries. All right, and uh, maybe this is the problem. You know what I mean? Nearly 70% of Gaza aid from U.S. built peers stolen. So maybe the U.S. Uh, should probably guard their assets a little bit better as the Hamas-controlled government has gone in and ransacked all the humanitarian aid. So it doesn't sound like it's Israel's fault at all. Close to three-fourths of humanitarian aid transported from the new $320 million floating pier built by the U.S. military off the Gaza coast was stolen on Saturday en route to a U.N. warehouse, Reuters reported on Tuesday. Eleven trucks were cleaned out by Palestinians on the journey to the World Food Program warehouse in Deir al Bahala. And uh, in the Central Strip, with only five truckloads making it to the destination. They've not seen trucks for a while, a UN official told Reuters. They just basically mounted on the trucks and helped themselves to uh, some of the food parcels. Or all of them, 75%. According to the United Nations, no aid was delivered to the warehouse from the U.S. military pier on Sunday and Monday. The United Nations said that 10 truckloads of food aid from the pier arrived at the warehouse on Friday. Its first day of operations, it was transported by UN contractors. Why don't they have these contractors militarized and have weapons? And if anyone approaches, blare the alarm and be like, if you get within 10 feet, we will attack. We will fire upon you. Please turn around. Back it up. Like You know, it sounds like it's orchestrated. 
According to Israel, estimates Hamas has been stealing up to 60% of the aid entering the Gaza Strip, and a Channel 12 report last week revealed that the terrorist organization made at least $500 million in profit off humanitarian aid since the start of the war in October 7th. So, is it Israel? Is it America? Whose problem is this? All right, what's going on here? Armed robberies were staged so victims could apply for immigration visas. Yeah, we covered a story similar to this in the past, and... Uh, Basically, it was at a gas station, and someone was like, uh, yeah, let's set up this robbery, and it was a fake robbery, and a citizen was there, had a gun, and shot the guy in the head. Have you with us? I'm Joe Donlon. And I'm Marie Saavedra. More than a dozen terrifying robberies across Chicago and the suburbs were all staged, according to federal prosecutors, who handed down charges today against six men who they say faked those robberies in a scheme, all to obtain special immigration visas that were reserved for crime victims. CBS 2 investigator Megan Hickey joins us live from Bucktown, the scene of one of those staged crimes. Megan? Right, Joe and Murray, an employee was shot during a robbery here in July, and it's not clear exactly who was in on these staged robberies, but the feds say it was all part of a greater conspiracy to get these special visas. Back in July, the owner of this Bucktown liquor store told us he was stunned by the dramatic robbery that left his clerk with a gunshot wound. The surveillance video showed two masked men in all black walk in. The clerk and other customers handed over their wallets and belongings. Then one suspect fired a shot, injuring a 26-year-old employee. In January of 2023, police in Lake Villa said this suspect did the same thing in a liquor store there. But according to this newly filed federal indictment, both incidents and about a dozen others were staged in order for the victims to be able to obtain a special type of visa available to crime victims. Here's how the scheme worked, according to the feds. Six people are charged with organizing and participating in staged armed robberies. These would take place at restaurants, coffee shops, liquor stores, and gas stations across Chicago and the suburbs. They went from as far south as South Holland, north as Lake Villa, and as west as St. Charles, just to name a few. This scheme knew no borders, with two of the supposed fake crimes taking place in Tennessee and Louisiana as well. The undergone something pretty pretty uh, serious. Xavier Borjas is an immigration attorney who helps victims of crimes obtain U visas, which can help encourage victims to report crimes without fear of being deported. He says these cases are not what it's meant for. It's, it's very Yeah, obviously not what it's meant for. So we got scumbag migrants who are coming from all over the world seeking asylum in a country that's nowhere near theirs it's not ecuadorians and el salvadorians and venezuelans of course they're coming up but not anymore they're already here now we got chinese iranians uh turkish come on people shut this down close the border this is going to cost the american country it's everything it's over all right so what's going on what's next Boom, Osama Bin Lager beer sells out after going viral. Have a look at this. Interesting, 4.5%. A beer named after Osama Bin Laden is sold out after going viral on social media. Staff at Mitchell Brewing Company had to unplug phones and close their websites temporarily because of demand for Osama Bin Lager. The company of Billinghay Lincolnshire also brews Kim Jong Ale and Putin Porter. They're all tongue-in-cheek names, a nicer outlook on some horrible dictators, co-owner Luke Mitchell said. Millions of people have seen a picture of the beer, named after the former Al-Qaeda leader who died in 2011, posted on social media. Husband and wife Luke and Catherine Mitchell run the brewery in a pub. We've woken up the last couple of mornings with thousands and thousands and thousands of notifications, Mr. Mitchell said. It's been crazy, Mrs. Mitchell added. The phone just hasn't stopped for the last 48 hours. And here's an image of... Uh, the Winston Churchill Pale and the Kim Jong Ale. Everyone laughs when they see the names at the bar. As far as I'm aware, no one's been offended, but I'm sure there's someone out there. Yeah, I'm 100% I'm, I'm sure that a white liberal lady is going to show up and be very offended. Her name is likely Karen. I think there's always a risk of somebody being offended. Yeah, absolutely. There's always a risk of offense these days. All right, people, there you have it. That's your news for the day. Sigma Tiger all up in your grill. 10,000 likes. The mask is coming off. We're at about 2,000. Let's get this summer rocking. Let's get these likes crocking. Anyway, Sigma Tiger signing out.